with 25 vessels in the Black Sea Fleet based in Sevastopol and thousands of troops there too. The takeover was easy, not a shot fired in anger. But if Vladimir Putin is to keep Ukraine as part of his sphere of influence, well, what are his options now? The industrial east, which leans culturally very much towards Russia, is economically significant. It would be a major gain for Moscow. If Putin did decide to push his troops up there, well, he would have a major military advantage. Russia outspends the Ukraine by roughly 20 to 1 on its defence budget. Vladimir Putin has 845,000 military personnel at his disposal. Many of them are conscripts. But Russia's western, central and southern military centres have been put on high readiness. That is a total of 220,000 troops, 880 tanks and armoured vehicles and 210 aircraft. That includes 120 helicopters within that number. Contrastingly, Ukraine's forces have well, just shy of 130,000 troops, one million, though, supposedly in reserve, assuming, of course, that they would want to fight for Ukraine against Russia. Ukraine has two main tank brigades, the 1st Armoured Brigade up in the north and the 17th Armoured Brigade based further south. And the 6th Army Corps has six bases strategically covering the south near that border with the Crimean Peninsula. Ukraine's navy, which was controlled as well out of Sevastopol, has 25 ships. It's also currently refurbishing its rather tired Foxtrot-class submarine. The Ukraine Air Force, that is headquartered up here in Vinnytsia. There's about 221 combat-capable aircraft, including 90 Russian-built MiG-29s. Not all of them are in a fit state to fly, though. Ukraine's military is a lot smaller than Russia's. It's in need of updating, but it does have experience operating alongside NATO forces in Afghanistan, Iraq, and on anti-piracy operations in the Gulf of Aden.